enjoy. Now, my vision for this show is to be an upbeat, a lot of fun, back and forth between myself and those on the other end of the screen talking about exactly what you are here to listen to, and that is lacrosse. But unfortunately, we're kicking today's show off in a not-so-fun way because on Saturday, March 13th, an incident occurred at a Division Three college located about 50 miles northwest of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And myself, as well as the rest of the lacrosse flash team, think that it is really important that we continue to bring awareness to these issues and cover it as we did not have a show last week. And it, this still is a story that continues to grow and we want to continue to bring awareness to it. The University of the South, more commonly known as Sewanee, hosted Emmanuel College in a men's lacrosse game back on March 13. And during the game, Racial slurs were shouted at players on the Emmanuel College team by Sewanee students attending the game. The university has yet to identify those responsible, but has since opened an investigation into the incident and has reported it to the Southern Athletic Association for review in hopes that we can try to prevent these situations from happening again. But as we continue to see time and time again, they keep happening. And unfortunately for Sewanee, this seems like just a small piece to a much larger problem. In a statement, Sewanee condemned the actions of those at the game and apologized to Emmanuel College as well as its players and coaches. We have heard statements from Emmanuel College and U.S. Lacrosse. In the wake of the incident, various people on social media have voiced their concerns in the, day at, in the days after. But that only does so much. I want to welcome Jordan Johnson, Lacrosse Flash writer and analyst, to join me in this conversation because this is an issue that I know hits home for you. And as someone that has unfortunately had to experience instances like this, what else do we need to do to make sure that these instances don't keep happening? Well, man, first of all, just an honor to be on here, an honor to get to talk to you here today on this show. First of all, my heart goes out to the students of Emmanuel College, to those players that had to experience this. Unfortunately, it's not the first time we've seen something like this in the lacrosse world. And look, man, to answer your question, there is no there is no right answer. There is no solution. I can sit here and talk. Anybody can sit here and talk, but the message is only going to go so far. It's kind of the we can kind of need to start asking the am I doing something? And that's you, me, whoever. Instead of we as humans, we ask the who, what, when, why. We're all guilty of it. We do it. But the next step is the am I doing something? Am I promoting a culture that accepts everyone? And not to mention, too, the incident that we had last week in regards to the attacks on Asian Americans. This is not, this is a humanity issue. This isn't Black lives. This isn't Asian lives, whoever. It's, I mean, you can, there's certain instances, or, and I'm not trying to ignore the incidents themselves, but as a whole speaking, this is a humanity issue. And we need to start asking ourselves instead of who's going to speak next, who's going to talk about this, who's going to talk about that. What are we doing? What are we doing? Because at the end of the day, it's us, whether it's media, whether you're a coach, you're a player, we determine where this thing goes from here. And I mean, you can say it how it will, how you will, especially with everything that happened in 2020. Absolutely. Just a, definitely a, just a tough story that uh, just comes across. It, it, it seems like too often we're hearing about this stuff. And it, it seems like every time we, especially after, you know, the, the, um, the demonstrations we saw in, in 2020, it, it seemed like we were past all this, but it just continues to come up. And it, it, it's just, it's, it's unfortunate just as a, a lacrosse community, it's unfortunate that we, that we have to continue to talk about these instances. But as you're saying, very important that we keep these conversations going so that we can hopefully one day maybe find an, find an end to this. Right. I uh, kind of rubber back to a concept that Jovan Miller, you guys know who Jovan Miller is a uh, MLL all-star, one of the greatest players playing the MLL. He's been, as a lot of you know, he's been outspoken about these issues going back for years before 2020. And he was on his Instagram story over the weekend explaining the concept of, are you going to be a student versus the learner? And in 2020, I kind of deem it like this. Before 2020, a lot of people would walk past the class, see the teacher teaching it and be like, huh, this is an interesting class to take in regards to all of these issues going on. Then 2020, oh, okay, let me sign up for this class. And now that next kind of step is 
for who, if you're in the class, you can be a student all you want. I'm a college student, you know, I'm a, I'm going to be real. I'm a student in certain classes and I learn in certain classes, right? This is the one where you want to learn. Like being a student in this class, especially if you're affiliated in lacrosse or whatever, just in general, is that enough? Probably not. not I'm not going to even say probably not. It's not. A lot of people sat up there, listened to Jovi, whoever, BLA, Angie Tari on the woman's side, whoever, and then they just, you know, they went about their day, you know? That's why this stuff keeps coming up is because people are just listening. Okay, clap, clap. Yeah, they said it. We're going to look at them. It's not who or whenever. It's like, all right, you're glad you're listening, but yet we're still listening, but yet this stuff's still coming up, right? Yeah. So that's kind of the next step is like, and Joey said, all right, you come you become a student at the class are you going to your friend your teammate are you saying hey we're gonna cut this whether it's a word whether it's a demonstration we're doing whatever are we gonna cut it out or are we just gonna let it go you know because everybody makes it look good for the camera you know like oh we're just not gonna do this on camera let's not put this on social you know let's let's oh let's slide away from this but are you really doing that? And it's like, I don't know, like me, a lot of other people, like these incidents, like we hear about them in public, but I, I can't speak for other people. Like it's stuff in my DMs about stuff happening that doesn't go public. And it's like every, at least for myself, it's at least like once or twice a month, you hear about something dumb. Like, and you know, you don't, I'm not gonna put anybody on the spot because their pri stuff is private for a reason. But it's like too many of these stuff, this stuff is happening. Everybody that was quote unquote listening and doing stuff. I mean, and that's not to diminish everyone who is. Don't get me wrong there. Let me make that point whatsoever. Cause the progress that we were, the prog or lack thereof before all of this happened to where it's at now, if anything, last year accelerated that. And so like, let me just get that out of the way now don't want to diminish any of that but at the same time it's like we still have a long way to go you know and that's kind of that next step is like all right we've gotten a lot more students now to sign up for the class now we need how many of them are going to be the learners right you know take something out of it especially within our game of lacrosse you know this is i we we're sitting here talking about this in terms of lacrosse but this is like life man like this is, pe this is stuff people got to deal with every day, you know? Absolutely. I really like that analogy that, that you use with the, the student in the class or just simply being or being simply a student in the class or being an actual learner in the class. Because as a college student myself as well, I can s totally see where you're coming from. There's some classes that, yeah, you go there. It's like sometimes you're in it. Sometimes you're not totally in it. But there are your other classes where, yeah, you were always – paying attention during these other classes. This is one of them that seems like this is one that you have to pay attention and you have to learn and you have no to really absorb what everybody like yourself and, and like Joe Von Miller are kind of saying, because you guys are the ones that kind of have experienced those experiences. And let me say this too. Like, let me just get this out of the way. I haven't stepped on the field. I'm come, I come from the journalism background. I've said I've been outspoken about some stuff, whether it's in media, journalism, representation. That's a whole that's another thing. Look, the stuff that I've gotten compares nothing and fails to what other people have gotten. I'm not sitting here. I don't want a pity story whatsoever. I'm sitting here because I know I have a voice in media as I kind of go along and I want to be that help those people who are whether it's on the field off the field not only share their stories but help so that other people are aware and kind of help this movement because this is like i've said this before the same stuff that people deal with on the field like these issues of underrepresentation, underfunding whatever this is stuff is in our industry and what we're sitting here doing right now these are the same issues you know and so let me just make, I just want to make that clear. Like by no means am I taking my experiences, comparing them to anyone else or, you know, cause what 
can really, to be honest with you, some of the stuff I hear, like trolls and all this and people coming at me, it's nothing compared to, to what guys like Jovi have, Chaz, you know, guys that have heard things on the field. Some of these kids now, some of the stuff these kids are saying, anything, not to compare, but it's like, Jesus, like even like we've been out of school a couple of years and it's like, like Jesus, some of the stuff that they're hearing compared to when we were, it's like, whoo. But yeah, just wanted to make that, make that slight point. But Absolutely. Absolutely. In the wake of this incident, Oglethorpe University, another division three university in Georgia, they canceled their game with Sewanee that was scheduled for this past Saturday in support of their players. Sewanee is set to who's Bur- uh, Birmingham Southern this Friday night at 6 p.m. Eastern. We have not heard anything yet about that game getting canceled. But what do these cancellations mean going forward? And do you expect to see more cancellations as Sewanee continues to go about their, their, their season this year? Look, man, I think it's an individual program by program basis. I can't, you know, this brings up a concept of cancel culture and I don't want to cancel people right away. The University of the South, program uh, they can learn from this they can move forward but at the same time I can't blame their opponents for not wanting to go in there especially you know it's an issue within their lacrosse program just in my opinion just in how because clearly there was a culture there that allowed that but that's all but that's a bigger school issue as well though it wasn't anybody on the lacrosse team that said it those fans came there and they felt like they could say whatever the heck they wanted, right? So it's both an issue within the program and then the school. And like, from my perspective, if I was on a player on the opposing team, would I want to go in there right away? Probably not. I can't sit here and say, like, I'm not in that position, but if I had to, I probably wouldn't. So I can't sit here and blame a program who doesn't. But at the same time, it's like, if you want to go in there and play as a program, I don't go ahead. You're, you're well within your right to, you know, I think these programs that are going to play them, they've done, they're probably going to do their due diligence, make sure that the safety's there, whatnot from a, from that standpoint. And Hey, like, especially in this year, you know, the game's got to get played. So I can't either way. I don't blame programs for what they want to do, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, when it comes to racial issues, Jordan, what questions are we not asking? Because as I said before, and as you mentioned, we're seeing this, it just keeps, it's like a recurring incident. We saw it in Georgia around uh, the Asian Americans and the long history of violence and harassment that they have had to endure. These problems aren't going away. What questions aren't we asking around issues like this that might be holding us back from really figuring out solutions to these problems? Like I said earlier, I think it's, we're asking, even as humans, we're all guilty of it. We ask the who, what, when, why, right? Who did this? When was it? Why? What was the motivation behind it? But the next thing that we kind of miss is like, all right, how and am, right? The how is, how did this happen? How can we move forward, right? I think too often we get caught up in each individual incident, rather than how can we go about this? How can we go about this? And then, like I said earlier, the am I, am I reaching out to a teammate? Am I not saying this word? Or am I getting, am I doing, representing myself in how I would on a camera or wherever to eliminate this, right? I mean, and we're, nobody's perfect. I'm not sitting here saying that you and I are perfect people Sometimes we, we all say stuff, you know, we don't mean it. We go back on it, whatever. Sometimes you have to apologize and you have to do whatever you have to do. We're humans. We learn, but at the same time, it's when we say the culture, we can't have the culture of that, right? What things are going to happen one, you know, one time or another, the whole point of eliminating these things is to make sure it's not consistent, Right. It shouldn't be, there shouldn't be this pattern of where we hear about one thing one week and then the next thing we hear about the exact same incident or something like it, right? So that's, those are the questions that we're not kind of asking is the am I, am I, we're asking too many of the kind of the little ones who, what, what, the, the, the low hanging fruits in the sense of these incidences and the who's going to speak out about this, what are they saying about this, what are they, I mean, to be honest with you, like, 
I get all of these organizations love what they're doing. That's separate from, I think the, like the, that's part of the how, but that's set, like too many people try and combine all of this together. And it's, oh, these organizations are saying this, this and that. So I'm just going to get behind this organization. It's like, you can get behind the organization and still deal with it within yourself and within your individual programs, right? You know? Absolutely. So like, that's kind of what's not being addressed to say, I don't know if there's a specific question for say, but it's more so like people are kind of, people like want to gravitate towards organizations and understandably so, like so quickly before they uh, like realize that before this thing changes as a, for, in order for this thing to change as a whole, not only are those organizations going to do work because it's individual people coming together for one call for one cause, but it's within the individual person, you know, as a whole, like we are one, like lacrosse is one big sport. Society is one big congregation. I don't know, like what the word is to kind of describe it, but it's one big group of people coming together, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's kind of what we need to hit on. You talked about the culture within lacrosse and trying to, to change that culture. You, you brought up representation. How do we how do we go about changing this culture within lacrosse? Um, I read a U.S. lacrosse article that was kind of addressed to coaches, right? And it was like, are you going to save space in your recruiting classes? Are you going to go out and actually recruit the kids from other sports? So as far as from, you know, from a participatory level on that sense, that's certainly a way to go about it. There's also the grassroots concept where, hey, are we going out in these neighborhoods where, you know, like where I'm at, a kid around here can go, most kids around here can go buy a stick, have it set up around here. I'm right outside of Annapolis. Like a lot of these kids can, but there's other areas right by me, like where unfortunately the funding isn't there. Not every kid could go buy a $200 stick. Not every area has the ability to go that not every area has the sticks available <clears throat> and not only that you got to make it fun like we talked about earlier the opponents too and a lot of people have said like how do you tell a kid go play this uh sport when you know you're gonna hear unfortunately you're gonna hear an n-word called at you or you're gonna hear somebody's gonna say you shouldn't be playing that right mm -hmm. like i deem it from my perspective like, look, I grew up right outside of Annapolis. I always, before I started covering lacrosse in high school, I thought it was a frat boy, the most frat boy sport, shorts, whatever. All of the stereotypes you can think of. I started covering it, realized how nice and genuine the people are. And I think we need to continue that momentum, right? Within that Absolutely, momentum, because you go, as soon as you get in, it's such a small community and everyone's so willing and accepting of one another it's just we got to do a better job of the outreach of that because i think like you said once you get in through one person or another you know you can kind of you kind of realize real quick like hey some of these stereotypes are not true like these people are good dudes you know but I, from the outside perspective and i access to a lot of my friends now like what do you think from the outside of lacrosse a lot of my friends, I'll post everything and whatnot on Instagram, Snapchat. Everybody asks why you do that because I just want you to see it in a different light, right? Because you, a lot, especially being here in Maryland, like I said, a lot of people here see by being a hotbed, seeing it in frat boy culture, hanging out in downtown Annapolis, do up to no good and whatever. But it's like in reality, this is one of the most tight knit communities ever. Like we just got to do a better job of portraying that for say you know that's just my there's no there's no like I said with all these issues there's no right way to go about it it's subjective I think but in my opinion being somebody that was from the outside in terms of not only representation um of as a person of color but just in the sport in general having coming from the media side not playing I think that like I can bring the perspective of, hey, I was on the outside. This is what it looked like. Now let now that I'm sort of on the inside, hey, this is what we need to make it look like so that it appeals to the person who's never seen it. When we things like college across on ESPN and the PLL and 
when we see it on TV. This is like, I love that because this is how it appeals, you know, to people, you know, like we can have a whole discussion about streaming another day, but are we putting good games in front of eyes versus behind a paywall, you know, things like that. How are we appealing to people from the outside is really, I mean, look, appearance is one thing you actually, and then once you get people on the inside too, you got to make sure you have the right people that keep them in, you know, uh, retention is the biggest thing. You can get people from the outside all you want, but you got to have the right people within it to kind of keep them interested, keep them engaged, whether they pick up a stick or not, you know? Absolutely. The biggest thing is engagement with this thing, you know? Not every, you're not going to get everybody to pick up a skit, stick. I'm not the most athletic person. I know I can't step out on the field and do some of the things that some people are doing, and I'm okay with that. But guess what? I'm just as engaged as anyone, you know? And I think if you can get that, out of people, you can get more people to do that. Sort of like, sort of like from the football, the soccer sense. A lot of people aren't athletes, but they love football. They're engaged within football. Same thing, soccer, MMA, wrestling, whatever it is. You know, you can get a lot more of those people. That's where you kind of go, and that's where you can get some of that positive momentum. And to act, people can actually see the good within the community and whatnot. Jordan, I don't know if you saw this weekend. Tohoku Nance Coke went right hand to left hand, one hand scored SC top 10. I'm completely fine with not being able to do that. I'm completely yeah. accepting of, of his <laughs> right talent with you. compared to my lacrosse talent that really isn't there. <laughs> right. We're going to accept, we're going to accept not being uh, these, these big time lacrosse players. Jordan, I want to thank you for coming on and talking about the, the uh, incidents like these. I know it can be tough to talk about sometimes, especially as these incidents just continue to happen, but it's those tough conversations, as we're saying, that will hopefully rectify these issues and prevent them from happening again. So Thank you for coming on to talk about this. Jordan will be sticking around with us as we get into our college lacrosse conversation. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back.